Well, we wanna talk about home and auto insurance and three mistakes that sometimes we see clients making as they evaluate their policies over time. And we want to get into this topic through one of our favorite documentaries. So Austin, you wanna lead yeah. off with that? Yeah, I would love to. So Free Solo documents Alex Honnold's attempt to climb one of the most famous mountains in the United States. And it's El Capitan in Yosemite Valley in the National Park. And it's 3,000 feet of vertical climbing. Now, one, that's impressive. Yeah. I have friends from college that had tried to do it, and it took them several days. Yeah. Um, I have watched documentaries of people doing it in a couple hours. So that's impressive. Yeah. But Alex takes it a step further, and he does it without a rope. Ooh. So you have to think, what are the risks of climbing 3,000 vertical feet? Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. What are the risks of climbing 3,000 vertical feet without a rope? Ooh. It's life or death. Yeah. And the, the documentary is really astounding in how it explores both his psychological side as well as the completion of the climb. But the reality is, you know, as we think about risk, yeah. not all of us are going to take a risk to climb a 3,000 foot mountain vertically. And why would we? And why would we? Yeah. So as we dive into home and auto insurance today, we're going to just think about risk in general, but then what risks are we willing to take mm -hmm. with our insurance needs? Because if, if our insurance needs aren't met, we're probably not going to have a documentary done about us that goes viral that millions of people see, hopefully. I really hope not. I really hope that that doesn't happen. Yeah. So as we begin today, we're going to first start off just talking about what is insurance. Yeah. And at the baseline, insurance is a pooled risk. So when you think about buying auto insurance, or when you think about buying homeowners insurance, you have thousands, if not millions of people purchasing from the same insurer Mm -hmm. And the insurer is essentially saying, we will write policies so that if your home or automobile gets damaged, then we will pay. But they're expecting that not everybody is going to have an insurance claim. Right. They're expecting a small number of claims against a large number of policies. Right. So they're pooling all the risk together. And so we essentially, as we buy insurance, we are paying for coverage in case of an accident. Mm -hmm. Now, unlike Alex, we're not seeking the accident. We're not seeking... <laughs> to do something inherently dangerous. Right. And insurance companies know that. And they're, they're expecting that there are some people that are going to be driving a little bit more recklessly. There's going to be some people that drive more carefully. Mm -hmm. And so that pooled risk really helps you really ensure mm -hmm. that if an accident were to happen, that mm -hmm. you're going to be covered. Right. So coverage is broken down. We're going to start off with auto insurance yeah. into several parts. Right. Um, you can possibly see these on your statement as A, B, C, D, you may not see parts A, B, C, or D written on your statement, but those are what's covered. So the first mistake that we want to think about is not carrying enough liability insurance. Right. And, you know, as we think about the current state of affairs, especially in the United States, we're a very litigious society. People like to file lawsuits. Yeah. And if you don't have enough coverage, then you could be personally liable for damages that you incur on somebody else's vehicle. Right. Or if you run into somebody, a pedestrian, yeah. you could be, when you are liable for that, sometimes those damages are going to be significantly higher than your policy. So if you're underinsured, if you don't carry enough insurance, right. then that's a problem on your end. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look a little bit more deeply in how coverage is broken down. So liability limits are typically written on your policy as something mm -hmm. like, 15, 25, 100, or 100, 300, 100. Those are common numbers that you could see. Mm -hmm. The first one is what the insurance company will pay to any individual that is in an accident. So you run into a car, mm -hmm. the car has one person in it, right. that person needs surgery for their broken arm. Mm -hmm. Your insurance company, if you have 100 at the front end, mm -hmm. will pay up to $100,000 for one individual. The next number on there is 300. So in a $300,000 policy, they will pay up to $300,000 for bodily damages for the entirety of the vehicle. Right. So let's assume you and I are driving down the highway, somebody rear ends us, we both break an arm. Well, the policy will cover $100,000 for Spencer and then $100,000 for myself. Mm -hmm. Now, if the expense is only $1,000, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Now, if the expense is higher than that, that's where you can get into trouble. Mm -hmm. 
finally, that last hundred thousand or last number there mm -hmm. is a hundred thousand dollars on damage to another person's vehicle. Right. So where this can get into challenges is states have minimum levels of coverage. Right. So Tennessee, for instance, is 25, 50, 15. Mm -hmm. So your minimum coverage that you have to can, can keep on your policy is $25,000 of bodily damage for each individual, mm -hmm. $50,000 for each vehicle or right. for each accident, right. and then $15,000 for the, the actual vehicle itself. So right. 50,000 for all of the persons involved and then 15 for vehicle. Right. Now, let's peel this back and see where this could become problematic. I'm starting to see some problems. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are some definite big problems. Yeah. So according to Ars Technica, in December of 2022, mm -hmm. the average new car price was $50,000. Yeah. So if you have coverage for $15,000 right. and then you rear end a brand new car right. that costs the average price of $50,000, right. then you've got a delta of $35,000 that you have to cover. So just by not having enough coverage, mm -hmm. if by just covering the minimum of mm -hmm. Tennessee, mm -hmm. you now out of your pocket have to pay $35,000 to make that accident whole. Right. And so if you don't have, if you only are kept maintaining the minimum level of coverage, or if you're trying to keep the cheapest policy, mm -hmm. then you could really be in a bad spot. But, but let's even, let's dial this forward a little bit here with most of our clients. They go to a agent and the agent says, well, you need 100, 300, 100. Yeah. Um, but let's just say you hit the Maserati <laughs> or let's say I-40 was crazy and you ended up losing control of the vehicle a little bit in some slick conditions. And it wasn't just one car, but it was three or four cars. Right. It was a chain. Right. You know, there. Those numbers. $100,000 now doesn't sound like all that much. No. Um, if we've got multiple vehicles or we've got one really expensive vehicle. Right, right. And that doesn't even, and then if you do cause a multi car pileup, right. then you also have potential bodily damage for multiple people. Right. And so those coverages, while they seem like a lot, well, right. you know, as I look at that, I'm like, $15,000 is a good bit of money. Right. In an accident, it's not that much. Right. And I've been in multiple car wrecks where the, the bill just continues to climb, where right. thankfully we've never caused it, but it, it does. It just climbs. Well, and, and you don't know the physical ailments that are already existing with people and then how right. that can amplify them. Even at just a, a fender bender, yeah. you know, can, can create um, some really significant uh, damages and liabilities there. Right, right. So next part of that coverage is know that each state contains different minimums. So where Tennessee's was 25, 50, 15, mm -hmm. if I were to cross into maybe let's say Massachusetts, if their limit is higher, right. then when I cross that state line, it bumps up to that minimum. But sure. again, you still, if you're only covering the minimum, mm -hmm. it only bumps to the minimum. So really in a lot of these situations, what we are going to recommend is that you contact your insurance provider so that you can ensure that you're on the right coverage path. Well, and we'll talk about umbrella insurance in a different video, but we're going to surface that with all of our clients as one of those base case elements that we need to look at because that can push that 100, 300, 100, those limits up much, much higher into something that's actually meaningful if you get in a multi-vehicle accident on I-40 or something right. like that. Right. So one of the other big pieces with auto insurance that we want to cover mm -hmm. is just the idea of uninsured motorist coverage. In Tennessee, we have the third highest estimated percent of uninsured motorists, 23.7%, according to uh, the Insurance Information Institute in 2019. That's, not, that, that's not one of those areas we really want to be leading no, in. No, no. And my, I was driving my kids to school, and we were rear-ended by an uninsured motorist. And I am so thankful that I had uninsured motorist coverage because it covered the cost to replace our car. Right. Um, so just consider, make sure if you are in a state that has a high level of uninsured drivers, Tennessee, yeah. then I would highly, we would highly recommend that you have that coverage. Regardless, it's not a lot of these things that you can add on are not that expensive to your overall policy, mm -hmm. and they really can help you in case of a loss. Right. And again, 
That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to hedge protection against a loss. We don't want the loss to happen. We don't want to have to use the insurance. Right. But the insurance is really helpful when it does come about. You know, Austin, one of the things that we also recognize is that there's more personal injury cases filed on a year to year basis, usually in the United States, than we see in homes burning to the ground. And yet, as we think about insurance, our vision oftentimes is, okay, I want to insure because I, if my, I lose my home or my vehicle that, you know, I'll be covered. Right. For most of our clients, it's really the liability side that we've got to pay particular attention to in addition to these other pieces. Right. So let's, let's move on to that second mistake that we often see people making. And this is with respect to homeowners insurance. Right. Yeah. So that second mistake that we want to cover is underinsuring your home. Mm. And it's similar to the first one of not maintaining enough personal liability coverage. But if you underinsure your home, then you're not going to be covered in case of a total loss. So what happens is when you initially purchase insurance, you have insurance to cover the value of your home at the time of purchase. Right. And the way that insurance companies typically write these policies is as long as you maintain at least 80% of the value of your home in coverage, then they'll cover the cost to replace your home. Mm -hmm. Well, what often happens is People don't renew, they don't look at their policies on a year-to-year basis or on a, even on a 10-year basis sometimes. Right. And so, especially, you know, as we think about the last four or five years of the, the housing market, prices have gone up pretty substantially. Right. So, if your policy is not continuing to increase with that value of your home, mm-hmm. then you could be underinsured. Right. And so, how this is going to work, we're going to take a look at a couple visuals here that will kind of explain this in a little bit more depth. And as we do that, it's really the replacement cost of rebuilding your home. It's not the value of your land that Mm -hmm. we're thinking about. It is that replacement cost. And so that can go up and down, as you were saying, Austin, because of building materials, because of uh, the capacity of contractors to do that. So we have to be careful if we see a housing spike, how much insurance we have there. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So let's take a look at these visuals. So first off, If you purchased a home 10 years ago Mm -hmm. for $200,000 and insured it at the time for that full $200,000, then you'd be okay. Right. Um, Because you've covered the entire value of your home. Right. Now, if five years later, the cost to rebuild your home was $240,000, then you'd still be covered because 80% of that, $240,000, is $192,000. So the cost to replace, you've still got... You've got coverage for 200. Mm-hmm. The cost to replace is less than 80% of that 240, which is 192. Mm-hmm. So you've got that $8,000 gap mm-hmm. that you're still covered. So, so the insurance company is going to foot the entire bill because you're within their guidelines. Yep. yep. Yeah, exactly. So let's fast forward to today. Let's say the replacement cost of your home now is $300,000 and you've continue to maintain that $200,000 of coverage. Well, that $200,000 of coverage, it, it obviously is, it's only about two thirds of the value of the replacement cost. It's not 80%, it's only 66%, let's just say. So the insurer is going to come back to you and say, well, we will help you replace the cost, but we're not going to fully replace the cost because you're not in that window of having at least 80% insured value. So what will happen in that circumstance, they'll negotiate with you, but they may only pay two thirds of the cost of the replacement there or some other uh, value there, depending on how you negotiate with them. Far better to make sure that you've got that reviewed every couple of years. And oftentimes insurers will step up a little bit that face value of the coverage over time, but it can, as you mentioned, Austin, get really out of line with the cost to replace. Right. So as we think about other things that insurance companies will cover mm-hmm. when you think about your policy, um, if it's not listed in your policy and you don't have an open perils policy, mm-hmm. then you might not be covered for all the risks that you think. Um, so make sure that you're talking with your insurance company, make sure that you're having and maintaining coverage for everything that you want coverage for. And again, just like we talked about with auto insurance, a lot of these things to add on don't add significant cost to your policy. So make sure that you're talking about that with your insurance agent so that you can be adequately insured in case of a loss. Right. 
So now that we've walked through a little bit of an overview of auto insurance, we've walked through a little bit of an overview of homeowners insurance. What's that last mistake that people often make, Spencer? Well, it's really not looking each year at the policies as a whole mm. and working with an advisor on that. Yeah. And the way that we think about this is insurance companies, like every business that's out there, they're trying to build and grow their business. So what we find in most insurance companies is that they're going to give some kind of preferred or premium pricing oftentimes for new business. Mm -hmm. They want to attract you and they want their rates to be really competitive in the areas that they're good. Right. So it, whatever insurer you're working with, um, if you go to them that, that first year, oftentimes it would be very, very competitive you know, mm -hmm. with others. Thereafter, our experience has been that the rates step up. Now, they might not step up 50% or 100% or anything crazy like that. Right. But over time, what our observation has been is that those rates step up more than inflation. Mm. And at some point, they're not as competitive. Right. So they need to be uh, you know, looked at such that you can compare them. And maybe two, three years down the road, another insurer, they've got really competitive pricing and they're giving you that preferred price as a new customer. <laughs> yeah. Now, I hate it that they're doing that and, and those are the business practices, but that's the environment that we find ourselves right. in. So every, at least every couple of years, we really need to look at those policies, make sure things like, uh, do we have enough homeowners insurance for the rebuild that would mm -hmm. be required, but also really looking at the pricing and saying, okay, is this in line uh, with norms? And if you have, uh, a company that you're working with, like uh, my family and I, we use William Blunt Risk Advisors. They can look at five or six different insurers and go back to the marketplace and say, okay, well, you know, this company, company A, has been great for the last couple of years, but they just raised their rates. So right. let's look at B, C, and D, yep. and then maybe we switch over, you know, to another company in there. So having that independent review, looking at all the different kinds of pieces that we talked about in there and making sure that the fit is right is an important step each year. Great. Thanks for reviewing that, Spencer. Well, again, as you all think about next steps, what we really want to convey, again, is that you need to be looking at these things often. Right. Um, it's really important, not just that you review your bank statements right. and as part of your financial plan. Your insurance is part of your plan. Mm -hmm. A lot of these other pieces are part of your plan, and those need to be reviewed just like your bank account needs to be reviewed. Right. So find an insurance advisor that is trustworthy, mm -hmm. that will look at your policies with you on a regular basis. Yeah. And then if you're a client of ours, please feel free to bring in your insurance policies, and we'd love to review those with you just to see where you're sitting and what changes may need to be made. Right. Anything else, Spencer, before we wrap up today? No. All right. Take care, y'all. This content was provided by Retirement Planning Services. We're in Knoxville, Tennessee, and you can visit our website at www.seriousretirement.com. The information in this recording is intended for general educational and informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advisory, financial planning, legal, tax, or other professional advice based on your specific situation. Please consult with your professional advisor before taking any action based on its contents.